In this video we're going to explore the history of the old station and look at the building as it was a hundred years ago and as it is now. We also found out a really cool piece of information that we'll let you know about. The old station has over a hundred years of history. The station opened for use in 1896. This is the oldest photo we've been able to find so far. What you can see is the front and the main entrance to the station, the outbuildings on the right, which were turned into toilets. Behind the station on the left, that's where the trains would have run. I'm not quite sure if that's a train you can see there. The research we've done has said this photo is from the 1920s. This is what it looks like now, just a little different. When the station was converted to a house, the yard next door was sold off separately. That used to be the railway yard. What that's meant for the station is it doesn't have the big sweeping driveway it used to have. It has a little driveway that runs up the side and then goes to the front of the house. The building itself looks similar to how it did in the 1920s, which is fantastic but it does need a lot of restoration work and a lot of love and care to get the gardens back to where they should be. Some of the differences you can see between the 1920s photo and now are, on the right, this wall has been knocked down and there's an oil tanker there instead. I can't help thinking that that wall would be pretty good to hide the oil tank. Maybe we should think about reinstating it. There's also a tree growing out of the outbuilding. That's a little different from how it used to be. Moving to the left, the beams on the outside really need some work and might need replacing. The ones on the front are actually in better condition than the ones on the back of the station. I'll show you those shortly. A difference we spotted is that the chimneys have been rebuilt at some point. We'd love to reinstate these original Victorian chimneys. The woodwork on this side is pretty bad too. Some of the worst damage to the old station has been from the garden encroaching on the building. Here we have an overgrown holly bush, and this other bush has actually grown through the wall, knocking it down. In the 1920s photo here, you can see what looks like old railings. These are no longer here, and again, this is something we'd love to reinstate. The other thing I love from the 1920s photo is the lamps. There are three of them, two on the front of the station and one on the driveway. There's only one here now on the right of the front door. We'd love to recreate the lamp on the left and the one on the driveway. Before we look at the back of the station, there's one more thing to show you at the front. What we can see here is the corner of what used to be a cattle pen. This was used when livestock was transported by rail. We found an itinerary of tickets sold and goods transported in 1923. 6,874 passenger tickets issued. And we can also see parcels, coal and livestock. This photo we found isn't of our station, but it is on the same line. We believe it's one of the largest stations just a few miles from ours. Let's look at the back of the station. So this is the back of the station in 1920. Unfortunately, this photo isn't great quality, even with cleaning it up. What you can see are the toilets or outbuildings, which are much smaller than they are today. You can also see the canopy is really different than it is now. It stretches the whole length of the building. At the back of the old station now, you can see where the metal supports for the canopy were attached to the building and have now been cut off. You can also see there were originally six metal pillars. Now there's only two remaining. We are definitely going to restore these. What a shame the other four are missing. You can also see on these pillars that section at the top that doesn't seem to fit. It's really difficult to make out, but it looks like there may have been a more ornate top on these pillars originally. The wooden exterior at the front of the station needs restoring. At the back, it's so weather-worn it might need replacing. You can also see the railway platform and the railway tracks. Last point on this photo, to the right you can see a metal railway bridge. What's really great is we were able to find a much clearer photo of this. This picture shows exactly what the railway platforms would have been like. You can see the metal bridge and the stone bridge in the background. This is what it looks like now standing between the platforms and looking down towards the stone bridge. It's hugely overgrown and there's trees growing where the railway tracks used to be. And here's the view standing approximately where the metal bridge would have been. 
No room for trains anymore. There's the railway bridge. Here's a photo of the old station taken from the railway bridge. It's not great quality but you can see the old canopy and a steam train. Here's a better photo from the same time. The station closed in 1962. Here's a picture of the tracks being taken up after the station closed. In the 40 years between the 1920s photo and this one, you can see that the canopy has been taken away. It no longer stretches the length of the station. The outbuildings are still the same size though, so they must have been extended at a later date. This photo is taken in the 1970s. We're not sure what the building on the other side of the platform is being used for. Possibly car repairs. This photo was taken on the 10th of February 1983. At this point it was abandoned. It featured in an article about abandoned stations of the UK. Here's the building on the other platform. If you're wondering where this is now, it's here. Completely overgrown and you can barely see it. In 1893, planning permission was granted to convert the station into one single house. And then in 1985, permission was granted to extend the outbuildings. We unfortunately haven't found any pictures of this time. The next pictures we have are from 2009, when the house went up for sale. This is the old station in 2009. Look how much better the woodwork looks. It's so sad it's deteriorated so much. And here's the back. So it seems when the station was converted to a house, that's when the canopy was extended again. The station looks in pretty good condition. This is it again in 2023 when we bought it. Very run down and needing loads of renovation. When we were finding out about the old station, we found something really cool. One of the fun things we found was this board which was under a built-in bed. It reads, amazing true true fact, when this was a train station, the Queen slept at this house with police guard. No joke, the Queen slept under the bridge. We'd actually heard this before, but we don't know if it's true. This was fun to find, and we've written to the palace to find out if the Queen really did stay here. We're fortunate that we've been able to find some great old photos, but we know there's so much more to find out. So we are going to keep searching, but that's over a hundred years of photos of the old station from 1920 to 2023. From working station to being abandoned, then a family home, then needing lots of renovation again. We just need to get started. Subscribe to the old station renovation to see our journey.